Our goal at Everyday Driver is to help people find affordable cars that are fun to drive. And in those cases, you might be shopping for one of these. That's the standard Mazda 3. This is the standard Subaru Impreza, and that is a Focus. Not the Focus ST, just a Focus. Well, we, we recommend the hotter versions of these cars, but are they fun to drive like this? As far as it being a good car, well, yeah, it's, it's great, actually. <laughs> but it doesn't hold a line. It can't hold a line. I can tell when the tires are struggling, which is often. So this is the Ford Focus, just the SE. As you may know, we're fans of the Focus ST. And this is essentially the same platform with less power, less hair on fire. Again, we're driving these cars from a driving enthusiast perspective. If you're buying this Ford just because you like it and it's just going to be transportation for you, fine. But just so you know, there is something lurking even in the base model of this Focus. You can get all of these as a sedan or as a wagon. The cheapest version, of course, is always going to be the manual transmission sedan. But this is kind of a middle of the road Focus. This is kind of about how you probably want to spec it out for yourself. Except I would recommend you get the manual. Of the two models available, I feel like the hatch is better looking than the sedan. I keep coming back to the Focus ST. I really like the aggressive styling and I can see where that came from on this Focus. I like how it sits, I like the stance, especially when you're behind one on the freeway. It looks great and I feel like it's going to look good for a long time. I don't feel any different here than I did about the ST. I mean, I still feel like it's got a little bit of a depressed catfish in the face. It's okay. It's, it feels taut and kind of like a sporty car. I just, I don't see anything here that really compels me. To me, the interior of the Focus, it's just a sea of black plastic. I like the steering wheel. I like how chunky it is. But the rest of the interior just kind of lets you down, especially the form language going on up high. As compared to the HVAC controls down here, they're completely different shapes. A lot of buttons, a lot of the shapes and the feel are a little bit too transformer for me. But materials wise are equivalent to the Subi. There's a lot of soft touch plastics. This has the best seats as far as driving hard. These are the seats that by far hold you the best. They're okay. They're not exactly sports seats. They're not ideal for sporty driving, but they are pretty good. The rear seats are far tighter than the Subaru. and You've got just enough headroom, just enough legroom if you're big guys like us. This isn't an expensive car, so am I asking too much? Maybe. This has a six-speed automatic. You can get paddle shifters, which unfortunately we don't have. It's these buttons on the side of the handle. That is a buzzkill. What's interesting though, it's a dual clutch automated manual, which means it feels kind of similar to the old DCT that was in the E46 M3. As a result, it doesn't really like going slow. It's not that fond of parking lots. It doesn't do commuting very well. It kind of lurches and feels like somebody learning to drive stick. The Subaru is really good in slow speed commuting and that kind of stuff. This doesn't like any of that at all, but gets better the harder you push on it. If this transmission would only hold a gear and downshift when I wanted it to, I would really like this car more. I want second. It just blinks at me. Yeah. If you can get the transmission in the right gear, you can actually really utilize all the power that's here, but it's never really going to be a powerhouse. Okay, let me have third, and is it going to let me have second? Oh, never, never when I need it. But you just solve the problem, you get the manual and you move on. Now this Focus has the 160 horsepower four cylinder, and it makes decent power. If you're above 5,000, this car is actually pretty quick. It's not bad. You start to actually be vaguely competitive if you want to keep up on freeways. And back here on a back road, it's, it's willing enough, but most of that comes down to the fact that the car just doesn't weigh that much. Don't expect to win a drag race, though. The reason Todd and I like doing these comparisons back to back is because we jump out of one car right into the next and the differences are immediately apparent. I and mean, let's be honest, if you jumped into a radio flyer wagon right out of the Subaru, it would handle better. But 
instantly I can feel a lot sharper steering response in the Focus. Even though the Mazda has a slightly sharper steering rack, the Focus feels the sharpest. It just darts in as soon as you move the wheel. It maintained that same kind of darting, sharp feel that you actually have in the ST is even in this lower model. See, this is what we're looking for. If it gives you even a little smile, if you're just delighted a little bit, then the car's worth owning. It's very precise. The problem with it is, it's too precise for the rest of the car. As soon as you turn in, yes, the initial turn in is great, but then the whole car starts to understand, here's what we're doing now, and then everything starts to roll, and by that time you need to change direction, which starts to upset the center of gravity. It's a little frenetic. It's light on its feet. It's got kind of a hummingbird demeanor. It wants to dart into the corner. I really respond to that. That's something I really like. When you throw the Focus in, the rotation's good as well. It feels like it's spinning near the middle of the car in spite of being front wheel drive. And even though this doesn't have the extra handling package with the 18 inch wheels and the sport tune suspension, this still has a really good tendency to rotate. I mean, the back feels more involved than a lot of front wheel drive cars, and certainly a lot more than the Subaru. It doesn't feel planted for me. It doesn't feel just glued down. Again, of course, I know we are splitting hairs but we need to, to find out about these cars. Are you gonna be happy if you're owning this car? I know Paul seems to think I'm just responding to the weight of the steering wheel, but the truth is, this is the one with the most information. It's pretty interesting because if you've watched our Focus ST versus the prior generation Mazda Speed 3, Todd was all about the Mazda, I was all about the Ford. It seems to be that we're switching a little bit when it comes to these cars. It's actually about communication between the fact that these seats don't let you go and the information rumbling up through the tires. I feel far more involved here than I do in the other two cars. This is a fun little car and especially for the price, I say it's hard to go wrong. This is a little bit more than just basic transportation. So therefore, there is an enthusiast component to this car. I like it. Yes, I'd like more power. Yes, I'd like flatter, more responsive handling, but it does a pretty good job, especially in steering feel and in body rotation. So for the price, for a first time car, I'm pretty impressed. Was this a lukewarm day or was this an enthusiast it, uh, it, it driving day? It wasn't coma inducing. That's the thing. It actually was <laughs> kind of informative. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The, the lukewarm hatches.